The Everbloom returns from Warlords of Draenor for Dragonflight Season 3 Mythic Plus. This masterclass will arm you with everything you need to know to ace your tyrannical and fortified weeks Mythic Plus dungeons. Off the bat, I'm pulling the Berserker alongside the front mobs here. Some people go for a bigger pull, but you know, they actually change some of the abilities, so let's kind of talk about it. You can see from the pink colored platers here. By the way, my plater profile is free, it's in the description, but there's two casters as you can see, the Cultivator and the Naturalist. So the Cultivator does something called Enraged Growth. The cast goes off, one of the enemies that you're facing will be enraged, naturally dealing more damage, so interrupt it if you can. The Naturalist does something called Dancing Horns. This is purely single target magical damage. It's a good to kick, probably not as important as the Enraged Growth. Anyway, continuing with the footage here, you can see an important cast coming up here. The Naturalist also does something called Choking Vines. Now from what it seems for a PTR, this could be quite a painful ability to take. It also reduces your movement speed and haste, so not ideal, make sure you interrupt this. But other than that, the mobs here, they don't really do anything too drastic. Um, and like I said, this first pool here, it could be done bigger with the next pool if you have Bloodlust on cooldown. I think that's possible based on some testing, but this is a masterclass. It's meant to kind of ease you into the dungeon. This is puck friendly uh, to make sure that you guys are able to do this dungeon with ease here. The only thing I'll say about the Berserker that is dangerous is that it will randomly pick a target and then it will dash the target and do this bounding whirl. This thing kind of hurts. And you can see the people standing in the AoE actually took quite a bit of damage. So just be a bit wary of that. That's something that you need to be careful about. The next pool here is the second pool. And I said like this could be combined with the first pool if you want it. You have two casters here, the Cultivator and the Naturalist again. And you have all these dread battles that, you know, they don't really do much. You have this Stinger mob and let's talk about it in a bit. Just pausing the frame here, we failed to kick the Enraged Growth here. So it's a bit unfortunate. But the Choking Vines, that's the important one that you want to try and drop. You can see if you don't kick, it just constantly channels on someone and it's quite considerable damage. So the other thing to take note of is because of the Stinger in this pack, you basically have this stacking debuff on your tank. Just take note if you're pulling too many Stingers, um, those kind of rack up and you just need to be pretty careful as a tank, maybe as you get higher and higher stacks, make sure you pop some form of defensives. Um, you have the Naturalist here that is being pulled in the next very pack, so only one uh, custom mob. You can see that over here, um, because I have multiple Stingers in this pool, the debuff that they place on the tank stacks up really, really quickly. Naturally, if it starts being a problem, make sure you kite. Um, basically, you can stun and run them away from you, uh, put some distance and let your debuffs kind of drop off before you kind of go back and tank again. Um, other than that, I don't think there's too much to talk about in these trash. I do notice that the older dungeons that they're bringing back for Dragonflight, the mechanics wise in, uh, in terms of mobs, not that difficult. Um, anyway, we came to this clearing and I'm just clearing out this spot here um, with these dread petals that honestly don't do much. And the reason is because you want to pull this mini boss snakes. It is now root. Uh, mini boss, which by the way is um, the name of the boss in <laughs> Emma Drasil, um, which you guys will face in 10.2. Anyway, this is a mini boss. And what you want to do is you want to stack in melee range when it's about to do now roots. And the reason is because it spawns these roots that needs to be DPS down, else you're just simply rooted. And it's dangerous and needs to be uh, killed because it does the next ability called Living Leaves, which basically puts a AoE on the ground that silences you and also causes you to take damage. You see those um, kind of swirlies, you don't want to be in them. And that's why you want to stack up in melee range and kind of um, just make sure you DPS and help one another out freely. Um, the druid here can shapeshift. You can see he shapeshifted out. So um, I was initially just trying to stack on him. But other than that, um, you can see like the silence effect right there. It's very deadly if you guys don't stack up and clear your roots ASAP. But um, I think as long as you have your range, basically not stand in Narnia and come into melee range, or everyone can basically just swap onto them and cleave them down real fast. Um, now, this next pull before the first boss, in back in Warlords of Draenor, you can actually pull the entire room, all the casters at once, and then you chain your crowd controls. Um, but I guess we have three rooks, right? So obviously we don't have much AoE crowd controls or stops, but I'm just telling you it's possible. You just need to watch several important casts in this area that I'll now... Um, cover and talk about. So um, you can see I basically chose to tag the patrol to the right um, and I'll tag it to these three mobs here. Now there's a few important cards, right? Like I said, you guys already know about choking vines. It's single target, it's channel on someone, it kind of hurts. But the most important kick in this group here is the healing waters by far. Healing waters, as the name suggests, is simply, well, it heals the mobs. So um, make sure you kick that. Dancing Thorn 
is not that dangerous. Um, as a tank, just make sure you have some form of mitigation up and you should be a-okay. Uh, but naturally, please try and help your tank stop as much as the cast as possible, but try and prioritize the heals and the choking vines. Um, I'm just going to forward through the rest here because, look, they have the exact same abilities, right? The Mender, the Naturalist, they do the exact same caster abilities. So I'm just going to forward through this basically um three bunch of them um, around the next boss alongside the patrol that we did earlier. And um, if you're feeling very adventurous, you can actually um, pull all of them at the same time um, and basically kill them. Now, this boss, the strat is basically, you want to try and tank the boss near this edge here. There's some min-max stuff that you can do where, oh, you only move the boss after the first breath is doable. Yes, that's what people did in Warlords of Draenor. But again, this is a park guide. Don't need to be fancy. After some RP, the boss wither about will become active. And what you want to do is you want to try and tank the boss all the way to the side of the room. And there's a good reason for that. Um, you can see I'm building some threat of the boss and then I'm spinning the boss to one side. Um, the reason why you spin the boss to one side is because you can see from uh, the plater indicators here, Patch Gaps is actually a frontal. It's a frontal breath. Um, some people wait for the breath to basically come out before you basically leap away or you roll away and outrange the breath. It's possible. Um, it's just little min-max stuff, right? But you want to tank the boss close to the ledge here. Um, and the rationale is you can see that your party is slowly being targeted by all these roots as the tank gets frontal on. You can see, um, what are all these roots, right? You might be wondering. And you can see my druid being targeted with the yellow arrow there running to the right of the screen. What's he doing? He's trying to drop all these roots near the boss. And you'll see why in a bit. The boss basically will go inactive after a while. And he says that it's completely dehydrated and has brittle bark. So in this very phase, when the boss has brittle bark active, the boss is going to take additional damage. So you can actually save your cooldowns here if you like. And the way the boss goes back to being active is if you actually let the water globules or water orbs actually touch the boss because it's dehydrated, right? So if you let four water orbs touch the boss, it goes back to its normal state where it's active again. The idea is you will let all the globules of water, you can see it starts traveling from the river, right? All the way towards the boss. But because you very cleverly dropped all these roots near the boss, whenever a water orb touches one of these roots, it spawns an ad, right? And the ads don't do much. Tanks just pick them up with aggro. Um, and you basically want to play like um, guard the boss away from the water orbs touching the boss, right? Because the longer the boss is inactive, the more damage you can do in this uh, weakened state of the boss. And you basically just always want to surround the boss with all these roots to kind of protect the boss from going back to its original state for as long as possible. Um, if you have good enough DPS, you can actually do it within one phase. Naturally, the um, thing about um, this particular part of the fight is that the tank needs to be very careful that he wants to pick up the adds fast um, because the ads, as you can see, it was trying to melee my healer there. Um, it does hurt um, in terms of, you know, just the melee swings. Um, and if you want to swap and kill the ops, you can, right? But eventually, you might be overwhelmed and you can see that the boss eventually uh, goes back to normal after four ops are um, in contact with the boss, right? And always make sure you point the frontal away from your group. Um, you can see me tanking the ads there. It really doesn't do that much at the end of the day. Um, but this boss then rinses and repeats, right? So I'm just going to forward because it just does a frontal. Um, and after that, um, you know, it goes, as you can see, it eventually goes back to its brittle bark state, right? Um, and then, you know, the cycle starts again. You have all the water ops coming. Uh, the water ops don't have that much health, by the way. So you can actually swap to them and kill them. But the idea is that um, you generally want to just cleave off the boss and kill the ads. Don't ever like try and pad on the ads. It's pointless. Always try and single target a boss and cleave off the boss onto the ads. Um, that's the first boss, kind of straightforward. Um, you want to mount up and you want to start running back to the start of the entrance where there was a fork, right? So basically at the start of the entrance, you came down here and you turned left. Now you want to go the other direction. And yes, if you played Warlords or Draenor, you would skip after the first boss, but unfortunately the skip doesn't work anymore. Um, so that's that. Um, just watch out here. Like you have the Berserker, right? So every time you see a Berserker, in the party, you can see like it literally jumped out and almost killed my um, a druid. So it's just something to take note of. And um, the dread battles don't do much. So that's pretty much it. I won't cover these two mobs because I've already covered them. Um, and then you have the Mender and you already know what the Mender does from the name, right? It casts basically the healing uh, abilities that needs to be dodged. Oh, 
I forgot to mention, in this pool, right, you have, whenever you see like double berserkers, just be very careful that they might jump the same target and instantly try and whirlwind and kill the person. So on higher keys, it could be pretty dangerous. Um, just saying. Um, other than that, um, there's pretty much not much to really talk about. Oh, there's Noxious Eruption. Let's talk about that. So this is basically an AoE burst, right? You can see that it does damage in an AoE fashion. Um, it's just something that you need to be careful of and heal through. Um, you have more Berserkers and Abominations and Naturalists. These are the same mobs. Again, I think the most dangerous here, honestly, is the Berserker. Um, the, the Vortex there could, well, you can see like when you dashed out, um, it literally got sucked back in by the Vortex and it cancelled um, it's charge out, so that's kind of handy. Um, other than that, just kind of, you know, continue clear trash. You can see they kind of hurt a fair bit. Um, but with cooldowns, it should be all right. Just going to forward here. They don't really do much. By the way, you can actually stop the whirlwind with stuns and CCs. Just FYI. Um, just going to forward here. All right, so on this part, I think some people might opt to shroud. I think it's possible, actually. Um, you can actually just hunk left and ignore the berserkers to the right. Um, but those mobs, you have seen them all, right? Abomination, Drap Battles, Berserker, Mender, you've seen them all. So I'm just going to forward a little here and you would very quickly realize that Everbloom actually, there's not a lot of mob diversity versus some of the other masterclasses I've actually covered on this channel. So I'm just going to forward here, um, you know, kick the healing waters. Um, these are clusters you've already seen. Uh, Berserker we've talked about. Um, so let me maybe talk about the boss while we kill these remaining ads, right? So the next boss is kind of like a council fight style. Um, you don't have to kill them all at the same time, which is great. Um, there is basically two very important clusters. You can see that I marked um, out of the, the three bosses, two of them are actually marked as clusters, and it's really important. There's only two abilities that is a must kick. And if you have a scuffy comp like ours, which is three range, I'm sorry, three melees, three rogues, no range kicks, it can be a bit dicey, and let me explain why. So you always want to mark one of the clusters to be the priority target to kill. What you need to know is that Gola does an ability called Revitalize. Revitalize, like the name suggests, it heals the bosses. So don't ever let the heal go off. Then you have Telu. Telu does something called Toxic Bloom. And if you don't interrupt Toxic Bloom, it stuns everyone. So you can imagine why that's a very bad idea. And I'll cover Duhu as I play the video, but you can see I'm about to engage them over here. Ideally, you assign kicks. Okay, so Telu does this uh, Nature's Wrath, right? Just rewinding here a little. Telu does this thing called Nature's Wrath that honestly, um, it doesn't do a lot of damage, right? That's the ability that you can kind of let it go through. But this Toxic Bloom is a must kick. Very important. If you don't kick Toxic Bloom, not only does it do damage, it's a very lengthy stun on everyone, most likely a wipe. As a tank FYI, you need to make sure you're always tanking the melee mob, which is Duhu. The other two are casters, right? And then you have Gola that's just doing Torrential Fury, which is basically unavoidable damage on the party. But because we have like three melees here, actually the mistake that I think maybe they didn't understand the instructions was ideally you have one person sitting on Gola because Gola needs to be interrupted with the heal, right? And we don't have a range kick. If we have a range kick, the person can simply watch Gola's heal. So I think this was pretty scuffy uh, an attempt actually. Um, so anyway, you make sure you kick the Toxic Bloom. I know that Gola might be casting the heal soon. That's why I'm walking over. Um, oh, by the way, this is what um, you guys will encounter as well. Duhu will do this thing called Noxious Charge. Essentially, it marks you with this circle. And as it channels, at the end of its channel, it will charge you and deal AoE damage and leave like nasty puddles behind that you need to dodge, right? So everything on the ground is bad. Stay out of them. Um, as a tank, I tend to move away at the final second just to make sure that um, none of my party members get clipped by the charge. Um, and then, you know, pretty much after that, you want to try and make room. Ideally, hopefully, like you have space on the ground to continue working on the casters that you're previously working on. So um, over here, you can see that Skull is about to do Toxic Bloom. No one is sitting on Skull, right? That's our mistake. Watch what happens when the cast goes off. Oh, actually, I stand corrected. Rewinding the footage, watch this rogue here. He kicks it at the last second. You can see this interrupted over here. But we miss kick it later and you'll see what happens anyway. Um, charge goes out. Gola's about to do heal, revitalize, I swing by to kick because I knew that no one was watching, um, you know, the, the the healer mob. But you can see it was kind of scuffy because we have no voice comms and we were torn between hitting Skull and Gola. Ideally, you just want to focus on one down, but I couldn't. Yeah, I, you know, I had to swing by and kick the heal because no one was walking by to kick the heal. Essentially, long, long story short, all I'm saying is that in parks, 
make sure you assign someone to kick the heel and you guys can work off the other boss or assign someone to kick Toxic Bloom and someone else to kick the heel. You can see what happens here. The toxic Bloom went off, right? I'm stunned for four seconds and this Noxious Charge happens, it's gonna absolutely wreck people. That is why you always kick um, the Toxic Bloom. This is the disaster that is waiting to happen if people in parks um, don't interrupt the boss for the Toxic Bloom as well as the Revitalize. So over here, I'm trying to move over and kick. At the last second, I did. I managed to kick at the last second. Meanwhile, the Druid is getting the B-Res off. Unfortunately, we have no more kick. So this, you know, you can see what happens, right? Gola just managed to get a revitalized cast off on Telu and Telu healed. So that's very bad, right? Um, so yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that no one um, is interrupting the bosses, which is um, probably what's going to happen as people learn the dungeon. So um, hopefully, uh, you know, my mistake, uh, my painful mistake can be... Uh, a source of uh, learning for many people. Anyway, um, the fight just rinses and repeat from here. Like there's no new mechanics other than what I've told you guys. Essentially, always make sure you kick the heal, kick the toxic bloom, and you are A-OK. -okay. It's gonna be really easy. And just make sure like, um, if you're being charged, don't stand with the tank, um, you know, and then just avoid standing in swirlies. After one of the bosses die, it's just way easier, right? Um, and yeah, just swing by, kick kill this mob and then we just end up three manning the rest of the boss so i'm just gonna forward because nothing new happens here on um it's an easy boss as long as you guys assign interrupts anyway that's it that's the boss um so after you kill the boss you want to mount up and you run up this uh little pathway here you have the optional spider boss there but you don't have to do it for mythic plus um just like you don't have to do it optionally for time walking. Okay, in this next area, I would say that there are a lot of dangerous custom mobs. Probably the most dangerous custom mobs here. And you should probably know, Pyromancer casts Pyroblast. And um, if you played World of Warcraft, you know that Pyroblast is a very bad sounding spell. It does a lot of heavy damage. Um, so you always want to make sure that uh, you try and prioritize kicks there. I assume that I wrong with me, but no. So you can see the Pyroblast going off there. Um, and that kind of hurts. Um, so... Yeah, you probably want to prioritize the Pyroblast. Um, you will also see all these like op, um, ice ops that kind of congregate um, to one spot. You want to avoid getting hit by those ops, else you get frozen. Um, and you can see Pyroblast is going off again. I kicked the Pyroblast this time around, um, figuring out that I probably should, you know, sit on the interrupts. But it's a bit unfortunate because like, um, we we definitely are not doing interrupts properly here, right? Um, and I think one of our rogues probably DC or it's probably on the way back or something. So that's why. Um, but yeah, all I'm saying is that the pyromancers are dangerous. Um, and then you, it basically also does this thing called Cinderbolt Salvo and it just like spews this fire AOE um, at a group that your healer just needs to heal through. This mobs aren't hard at all as long as you are able to kick. You can see my kicks on cooldown here. It goes pyroblast, boom, one shot on the druid, dead. Instantly deleted from the game, right? So make sure you assign kicks. That's all I'm saying. Um, anyway, while waiting for my druid to run back, uh, we're working on this assistance um, and they basically do like, you know, pretty much a tank hitting ability. It's kind of heavy hitting, by the way. The assistance, like they do this fungal fist thing that does hurt on the tank. So if you're pulling big here, be careful as a tank, pop cooldowns. Uh, you'll see that this is where the next boss is, right? Arc Mage Soul is being guarded by all these casters. So anyway, we're waiting for our friends to walk back. So um, I figured I'd just pull an easy pull here, which is basically the assistance and just one uh, particular caster, which is the Arcanomancer. Ideally, you also kick the Arcanomancer. Um, it just makes life a lot easier that way. But I would say that it's probably not as dangerous as the Pyroblast for sure. The Pyroblast is absolutely uh, devastating if uh, they get their cast off and that pretty much one-shots people. Um, so over here, you can see like the Arcane Blast went off, right? That's also sizable damage, but it doesn't like one-shot, one-shot like Pyroblast. Uh, but it's still pretty much a lot of damage to avoid. Um, if you possibly can. Now, we pull the next boss and we have four interrupts, okay? We have four interrupts. I kick the first Pyroblast. And what at this point in time needs to happen is ideally in a punk, you probably want to assign who kicks what, but because no one is kicking anything, right? You can see everyone's kick is available here. Like people literally like get deleted by all the cars. Um, and once you fall behind without a healer, um, then you're pretty much in for trouble. So again, you've seen all these three mobs, right? I've already talked about them, but um, I kicked the Pyroblast there. But if you don't kick any of his abilities, oh, I'm just in for trouble. Um, so there's nothing much we can do without a healer. I'm just trying to self-sustain as much as I can. I eventually go down as well. You can see I probably got Pyroblasted. Anyway, we run back. We do the uh, mobs again. Someone didn't kick again. We got Pyroblaster again. And then uh, it's just unfortunate, you know, mishaps of cast after cast going off. And all I'll say again, 
before you pull the boss, when you're dealing these three mobs, make sure you assign kicks. Really important. So I'm just forwarding to the future. We eventually bring all of them down by throwing bodies at it. You can see that we have 18 deaths at this point. Uh, previously, we, it was a very smooth run, right? Barely any deaths. But yeah, we lost so much time here because um, we, we did interrupt on time. So that was a bit unfortunate. But anyway, you pull the boss, Armage Soul here, um, and she has three phases. Um, the abilities are a bit different from uh, Warlords of Draenor. They kind of changed it. So I'll kind of talk about it. Obviously, the fire phase, avoid the fire patches on the ground. That's pretty straightforward. Does fireball on the tank. Um, and um, it starts to do a phase change to the Frost Affinity and Common Sense dictates if you see Swirlies on the ground, move away. Now, what do these Swirlies do? The Glacial Fusion is basically what you saw earlier, right? The Ice Orbs starts congregating in the middle. If you touch the Ice Orbs, you will get frozen um, by the Orbs. You can see the Rogue over here, Eugenie, gets uh, frozen by the Orb because he got touched by one of these um, little things. And also the other Rogue also got touched by the Frost Orbs. So that's pretty unfortunate. Um, as a tank, you want to try and move the boss um, away from the dangerous fire patches because you want to try and make the dodging as easy as possible. And then the boss swaps to a fire affinity, as well as on the ground that you need to dodge. Um, it's just a bit messy in terms of terrain. So you want to try and move the boss to clear areas that gives your party the best chance of just dodging them properly. Just going to fall a little. Anyway, here I'm waiting for the phase change. There's one more mechanic you need to know about that could potentially kill you other than, you know, the fire patches and the ice orbs that you shouldn't touch. Um, it's a very important ability that I'm waiting for her to do to cover. And I think she does it at the very end, depending on the timer of the boss. Um, you can see another overlap of ice and fire. Just dodge everything, right? You always want to try and move out early. Don't want to wait for the orbs to congregate on you and you just get caught. Um, I think it's about to change here, if I'm not wrong. Um... So another frost bolt, it should face here. All right, so you notice this thing. It says arcane affinity. When you see arcane affinity, that is when you need to take note of a potential orb that you will throw that will suck you in. And this can be tricky. So it normally targets the furthest player away from the boss. So you can see when it does spatial compression, um, the furthest away is basically the druid, right? And it was basically standing here. Watch this orb. You can see this arcane orb. On top of the ice swirlies that you need to dodge, it also fires off this arcane orb. This arcane orb basically is a suction. It sucks you to the point. And why is it scary is because it basically disrupts your ability to dodge the ice orbs. So you can actually bait the direction of where the orb is flying. So maybe if you know that um, this part is safe, right? Maybe the range wants to be baiting it away from the boss. You can stand here, you bait the orb away. Let's just play it out. You see how it sucks people in, right? So the orb travels and it sucks you in when it explodes, right? Let me just rewind a little again. So watch, watch the arcane orb going out, flies out, sucks you in. So imagine like if I didn't roll there, I would get caught by, um, you know, like you can see Eugenie got caught over there because he got sucked into the spot. He thought he was safe, he was running out and he got sucked in by the arcane orb. So you can try and bait the arcane orb in a nice way, but the tanks, should also try and um, you know position the boss in a way where there's um, not uh, you know a lot more empty space. And by the way, because I have enough count here, so I basically just choose to shroud all the way to the end. But if you want to do them, um, it's just mobs that you've seen before, right? They're all assistants. They kind of hit hard on a tank. Uh, but maybe in a group where um, people don't know how to interrupt, maybe the assistants are better to do than the than the pyromancers and um, you know the the arcane and the frost people. Uh, there's a bit of RP once you hit this little gate, um, this RP, and then um, you wait for the RP to finish, and then you'll basically open the door to the final boss, which is Yao Nu. And um, let me just quickly talk about the boss here. So by the way, you need to enter the portal, right? Quick load screen, and then you see the boss um, you know, doing some RP. After some RP, you can engage the boss. It does something called Colossal Blow. This is a frontal as marked by the AOE on the ground. Always move away from the front of the boss. Very important. Uh, and then... Um, the boss basically would um, do a few abilities um, as it cycles between like some form of intermission and non-intermission. Um, you see what I mean in a bit. Um, but for the most of it, not a very hard boss fight, I'll say. Oh, this Verdant Eruption, obviously, just make sure you move away from the AoE. By the way, if you ever get hit by this AoE, you take damage and you also get stunned for 4 seconds. Very bad. On top of that, when it finishes its channel, it spawns an ad. You can see the ad over here, this Ancient, right? So you want to tank... Um, it with the boss so that you can basically cleave off uh, the boss. So you'll notice that this um, ad 
also do something called lumbering swipe. And swipe is actually a frontal, so you don't want to stand with the tank, basically. Um, essentially, there's like, you know, the, the ancient mob that will die if you tank it near the boss. It just dies to cleave damage, right? And then the next ability it does is basically Genesis. And this is the same as World of Draenor. When it does with Genesis, it spawns all these lashes on the ground that you need to run over and basically step on. If you did Season 2 of Dragonflight Underworld, you understand what it means uh, to step on those ticks. Um, on Crackmore, this is the exact same thing. You just run over the flowers and step on them as the boss channels Genesis. And um, any lashes that you fail to step on, they basically spawn, right? They become active. And you can see they do this thing called Lasher Venom which like the name suggests is single target and it kind of hurts. So if possible, don't let too many lashes spawn. If not, you might be overwhelmed pretty fast. Um, but other than that, the boss just rinses and repeat. So I'm just going to forward here just to show you guys the variation of the fight. Right, you have an ad, um, you taunt the ad, um, you make sure that uh, you stay away from the frontals of all the abilities in this fight and you should be a-okay generally, right? So. I'm just gonna forward through here. You can see me stepping on flowers, making sure no lashes spawn. Um, I think the the part where it gets dicey, you can see people dying here, is because ad, it's an ad management fight, right? It's an ad management fight. If you're being overwhelmed by ads, um, obviously swap off the boss, go work on the ads. Um, but eventually, as long as it's a control fight, as long as you're controlling the boss, and the ad, not dying to avoidable frontals, you should be a okay. Eventually, you come to a point where if the boss is low, you can actually ignore um, the um, flowers, the lashes on the ground, right? Because the lashes take a while to actually spawn because Genesis is a long channel. If the boss is already low um, and you want to save time, you can actually just commit to the boss. Do not step on any lashes and just, um, you know, try and kill the boss before Genesis runs out. But other than that, the boss just rinses and repeat. Doesn't do um, anything too fancy. But naturally, if you have a lot of ads, the damage will rack up. It sounds like a simple fight, but the challenge naturally is if you're overwhelmed by ads, then it starts to get to a point where it's almost unhealable, right? So um, DPS and uh, tanks need to work together in this phase to basically control the amount of ads that spawn. Anyway, if you're able to do that, eventually the boss will just uh, pretty much just fall over and die. But that's everything you need to know about Everbloom. So I wish you good luck in this dungeon for Mythic Plus and Season 3 of Dragonflight. If you found this guide helpful, smash that subscribe button. More such guides coming your way on this channel. You don't want to miss them. Shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Thanks for supporting the channel. See you folks soon.